Right. Good, 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 good evening, uh, Judge Potrede. Evening, Chief Justice. I'm so sorry we kept you waiting all day. We, we're not having a particularly good day. No, that is mm. perfectly in order. Yeah. How are you? I'm oh, surviving, CJ. Well, aren't we all? Yeah. You have a number of degrees, a BA, LLB, BA honors, an LLM, and a certificate in international trade law. That's, that's true. Uh, which ones were obtained uh, at the University of Western Cape? It's the BA, LLB, BA Honours. All right. And the LLM from UNISA? From UNISA. And the certificate uh, from uh, University of California? UCLA, yes. Which one? UCLA? Uh, Dave, Davis. Okay. You, you're an attorney. You, you, I attorney. Yes, I started off practice uh, as an attorney, yes. Mm -hmm. um, having done your articles in 1980 already. Yes. Mm. But you joined the Cape Bar as counsel in 1985 and practiced uh, in that capacity for 10 years. That is, that is correct. Until 1995. Yes. Then you became a commission of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. In, in 1996. In 1995? Well, you, your form says 1995 until 2001. Yes. Uh, six well, years. Okay. Uh, then I, you returned to the bar. Yes. And took silk. That's when did when did you take silk? In 1996. Okay. And uh, you were appointed as a judge on a permanent basis in two, 2022. That's correct, in Kubeha. Mm. Had you acted uh, yeah. as a judge previously? Yes, many times, yeah. CJ on aggregate, um, about five years, about if, five you, years. if you add it all together. Mm. So uh, you have been a judge uh, in, in reality for about seven years? About seven and a half, seven, seven and a half. years. Yeah. And where did you act in, in the Eastern Cape Division of the High Court still? I, I acted initially on a few occasions in the Western Cape, where I've always been based. Uh, I've acted in the Labor Court, and I've acted uh, the last few stints were in the Eastern Cape. Mm, okay. You sell yourself short in your questionnaire because you, this don't, don't come out clearly. I, I would have missed this, five, this important five years you mentioned because uh, the, the professional bodies are complaining that you are inexperienced and you could benefit yes. from uh, 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 more, more, more time. I've, I've noticed uh, it. Although I don't know, I mean, you turned 68 in, in just under two months, under three months, so I'm not entirely sure what, how much more experience one can gain once you, you become our age. Yes. But uh, in any event. But, yeah, I think one must do a bit of a calculation. Unfortunately, I didn't spell it out, but the years are there uh, for the acting stints. So, mm. yeah. It is important. All right. Um, so how many judgments would you say you've produced throughout this period on the bench? Uh, CJ, I would, I would say approaching 100. I've, mm -hmm. I've just done, uh, my office has just done a, a uh, sort of a, a sample test. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the last about 50 reserve judgments to just see which ones were reportable and mm. of interest and which ones were not to get sort of a percentage. Yeah. But as I say, it should, should be approaching 100. Mm. Um, how many, do you know how, if any, were reported? We well, usually rely on the GCB for, 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 yeah. for this uh, exercise, and they say yeah. they did not complete the review. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not a big one on that. Uh, I, uh, that's why I've asked my office to to do that sample. Mm. Uh, from that sample of 50 reserve judgments, there were about, say, 34, 35 percent were reportable mm -hmm. and of interest. All right. And that's where, that's where I part with them. I, 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 I don't really follow them up after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm too busy. There's no time for that. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, and I imagine that they would have been on a wide spectrum of, of the law. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Yeah. No, no. That is, that is correct. All right. Uh, as I've already alluded to the complaint by some of the professional bodies, the, the GCB and the Law Society of South Africa, yes. who say you, you, you don't have sufficient experience for this position you're applying for. What would you say to, 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 to that uh, no, criticism? I, no, I have, as I've said, I've performed judicial, the, the judicial functions for, for that period that I've referred to. Um, I know what the job is about. I know what to do. Uh, I enjoy doing it. So I don't think that there's, uh, there's an issue around that. Mm. that I am a novice who don't know where to start. Uh, CJ, I've, I've spent my, my entire professional career in uh, attending to uh, high court litigation, which is, which is the, the lifeblood of, uh, of the courts. So apart from the period that I've uh, been forming judicial functions. I've been doing litigation, high court litigation for a few decades. Mm. Do you have any leadership experience with, within the, the institution, the, the judiciary that is? Yeah, no, not, uh, not directly in the, uh, in the judiciary, but I have. Uh, any leadership experience? No, no, no. I haven't. I haven't occupied a a position uh, as a, uh, a leadership position in the in judiciary. No. Okay. All right. Uh, you've you've mentioned that you you've been on, on on the job long enough to know what this particular job requires. Uh, on that note, uh, what challenges, if any, have you identified uh, in, in that division that would require uh, an incoming deputy judge president to, to take action, yes. devise measures to, to, to address those challenges? Just, just concisely. Yes. Hmm. Concisely, uh, in my assessment, um, Chief Justice, uh, the, the, the real issue of the division is the fallout of the failure of leadership. Um, in fact, that is the elephant in the room. Um, that uh, there has been this protracted discord involving the leadership and everything else that went with that, we, most of us know uh, about the, the public face of that. Um, it's quite obvious that uh, the difficulty in the division is the, uh, in the division are the divisions that resulted from that situation. It persists, it's there. Um, that is part of the reason that uh, persuaded me when I was approached to, to make myself available. I've been steeped in that division. I know all of the senior judges. I've worked with many of them, if not most. And I know all the other judges. Um, so I'm well aware. Of, uh, of, of what the, the actual cause 
of the problems are. As I've said, it's a, it's a failure of leadership. And what you require is not an administrator or technocrat. What you require is an effective leader. So you, so, so you, you require effective leadership. Mm. Um, and uh, that is effective leadership um, is really not what you do. It's what you are. It is um, part of your nature. The, 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 the traits of effective leadership uh, are inherent, really. Uh, the fundamental hallmark is service. You must, you must. They, they, they use the term servant leader. That's really what it's, the essence of it is. Um, you must respect in order to earn respect. And to earn uh, buy-in. Um, and that is, it's, it's obviously what it lacked and which resulted in the situation that, uh, that obtained there. Have you worked in that division? In, uh, in the Western Cape? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. When? Uh, are, you, are you referring to judicial? Uh, yes. Yes. No, I've, uh, I've, I've, as I've said, I've spent um, four plus years uh, acting in that division. Oh, you acted as a judge there. Yeah, I've All acted, right. I, I've, most of the acting time was spent in that court. Okay. Um, okay. Started off way in 1998 already. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I may have cut you short. You were still addressing us on your, on your vision. Had you finished? Uh, so, so really, uh, Chief Justice, what is required sing, singularly is um, to return the division to normality and cohesion and to restore its um, stature and esteem through resolving the, um, the issue that I've referred to, mm. the one of, of discord, strife, lack of collegiality, uh, polarization, and the like. It's not, it's not, in my assessment, uh, an issue around the systems or technical issues. The systems are fine. They've been there for a long time, and they, they're functional. It's not the systems, it's relationships. That's where it lies. Mm. Okay. Of course, there are other things that one can, uh, that one can look at. Uh, but that fundamentally is what it's all about. You'll tell me when you're finished. Yes, yes. You have? Um, perhaps I can, I can just share some other thoughts mm. uh, while I'm at this. Um, draw, drawing on the, my, the situation where I am currently based, um, I think what one could do quite profitably is to look at the issue of decentralization in, in that division. I'm in a court where, which also serves a, a large, significant geographical area, and where there are five seats of the court, and you can see, although that's also historical, uh, but. Uh, you can see the, the difference that it makes with regard to accessibility. Um, it's important when one looks at the 
the Western Cape to, to, to think along the lines of what has started off um, slowly. There is, the Commission of the Verde, that there is um, a court established in Tembaletu, which is in the Southern Cape. The previous judge president has taken initiatives around uh, sittings in prisons, designating prisons a special court with uh, all of the cost savings and the rest of it that go with that. Um, so those are initiatives that could be um, pursued further uh, to bring the, the courts closer to the people, which is, which is the, um, the ultimate um, objective. So, so I believe that there is something that could be done uh, around that issue, which, as I've said, I've seen in, in, in action where I am. Um, there are um, questions around the turnover of, um, of judges through retirement, mostly, obviously senior uh, judges. Uh, the Commission has heard, I, I, I accept that um, there are a number of judges who would be retiring, senior judges would be retiring shortly um, in the next year or so, too. And the challenge around that is that uh, um, there is often not proactive uh, steps to uh, to deal with that uh, process of natural attrition. Um, so that is something that that needs to be looked at. Um, one can consider ways of transferring skills from those. Uh, to newer judges. Um, there is a, a, a sort of an informal uh, situation where uh, there are some of the senior judges who are um, engaged in training empowering uh, the newer judges. Um, I understand, for example, that uh, two of those senior judges uh, have been conducting these, these um, uh, sessions over lunchtime uh, in their free time where there is obviously uh, skills transfer uh, in that process. There is, of course, uh, a need for continuing education. The, the present sort of limited uh, Processes need to be expanded. Uh, I have myself benefited from uh, primary judicial training uh, as a practitioner. Uh, we have uh, undergone training by the Canadians, who are very good at this. Um, 
And uh, I've seen that there is benefit to have that sort of um, facility, as it were, available, which can simultaneously increase your pool of potential candidates and to upskill your, your existing um, serving judges. So, uh, so that is, is, is something that, uh, that needs to be, to be looked at. There is, I understand, uh, some sensitivity around that to make sure that when uh, hearings panels are constituted that you try to pay the uh, members on the panel so that you have skills transfer so you can put a, a, a newer judge with a senior judge uh, which of course is a very effective way of, uh, of learning. The um, judicial function is a practical one. You, you, you gather experience and skills as you go along. So, uh, so that is a, a, an important uh, process that uh, can possibly be expanded as it were. So those are the kinds of things that one, one, one could look at. Mm. All right. Um, I've already mentioned your age. Sh should it be an impediment to your appointment that, that you'll be turning 68 soon? No, I don't believe, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, <clears throat> I would have, uh, all things being equal, uh, a further eight years. Until, you work until 75? Yes, mm. I, can, I can do that. I, I am in a state to do that. Mm. So how, how is your health, no, if we ask? It is, uh, uh, it is, <laughs> I, I don't want to use the word excellent, you know what the health is like, but it's, it's good. Yeah, we don't want to jinx things. No, 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 no. We know. Uh, <laughs> All right. But, uh, but there's no issues. There's no physical issues there. Mm. Um, perhaps uh, health. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, age. Age. Um, should not really be such a big concern. See, because this, this uh, job requires uh, skill and experience. You only acquire those uh, through to practical exposure. This is a, it's, it's, a, it's a practical field. So the conventional wisdom is, has always been that um, you are ready for judicial appointment um, towards your later years, and that uh, that those are the types of um, candidates that uh, that are able to just move seamlessly into this the uh, the job and to and to perform. So, so one should not scoff at, uh, at age. Um, in fact, that is perhaps one of our difficulties when, uh, when one thinks of the turnover of, of judges, is that uh, you, you have a challenge to attract sufficiently experienced um, candidates because that's what you require for various reasons. Um, you must obviously make the, 
the, uh, uh, the position attractive to those kinds of, of, uh, of candidates. But it's difficult. It's difficult to do that. Um, so if, uh, if those kinds of candidates look at the workload of, uh, of judges, uh, which is not always appreciated or understood. Um, um, issues around adequate remuneration, uh, then it's, it's, uh, there, are, there are few incentives for, 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 for those kinds of uh, candidates to be persuaded to, to avail themselves. Judge Campbell. Thank you, CJ. I'll be brief. Evening, Mr. Sorry, Judge Fortita. Evening, uh, <coughs> Judge Campbell. Um, from your CV, it's clear that you, you were born in what was then known as Utenag, it's now Kariha. Kariha, you're quite right. Yeah. And then uh, you moved to the Western Cape for, for, for education, for your um, university education. That's right. You, I think you know the situation in, in those years. Yeah. Yeah. So and I had to then, come. And then I had to come to Western Cape. I beg your pardon. I, I had to come up to Western Cape. Yes. Although there was a university in Port Elizabeth, UPE in those years, and a university in Grahamstown. Yeah. You had yeah. no choice. I had no choice. Yes. But but since then, uh, put it, uh, since since then you practiced in Cape Town the whole time. That is true. And, and record will reflect that we were members of the bar together in the, in the 80s and, is, and thereafter. That is quite so. Um, when was the last time that you acted in the, I always call it the CPD, the Western Cape High Court? I think you probably still call it the CPD as well. Yes. When was yes. the last time that you acted there? Um, uh, I couldn't pick that up from I'll your... I'll have um, to look in the narrative, uh, if you'll just bear with me. Certainly. Yeah. I think well, it's 2009. 2009. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, thereafter in the Eastern Cape in 2019 and 2021. That's true. Um, you, you never applied for appointment in the in the Western Cape High Court, did you? Uh, Judge Campbell, um, <clears throat> I, I think perhaps you will remember. Uh, I think perhaps you'll remember when, <clears throat> when I was uh, appointed in the, in the Truth Commission. Uh, it was in, well, I did the initial process and then I, I was on the commission as well, um, which was supposed to have a lifespan initially of 18 months. Um, I made myself available for appointment in, in Cape Town uh, in 1997. Uh, at that stage I had <clears throat> 11 years of practice um, and I would probably have stood a reasonable chance at that, at that, st <clears throat> at that stage. However, I was um, prevailed upon uh, from up high, not to abandon the TRC process, which, which we then had to continue beyond the 18 months because it was, it was obviously too, too short. So, so I acceded to that, and I never took that appointment, uh, and then just uh, and, and carried on with those duties until I completed them. Um, so. So there I was, uh, I had seriously applied to be appointed. I was ready also to be appointed, but then this, uh, this intervened. Um, and then, of course, once I was done with that, uh, you know, the, the realities of raising children, growing children, going to high school, 
going to varsity. Um, I think most of us know what the implications are there. Uh, uh, it was just not uh, feasible to, to then pursue appointment. So I, I had carried on back in my practice. And um, then, of course, we had the unfortunate situation there in, in the court. Um, uh, at that stage, I wasn't really approached again to act, for example. Um, it was, as we all know, it was a bit unwholesome at that stage. And then, of course, the situation uh, arose in the Eastern Cape. And uh, I, I acted after I was asked by one of my friends who is on the, on the bench. Sir, Chief of Justice, I, I'm concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for instance, on this question, the question was simply one. Did the candidate ever apply for appointment in the Western Cape? But for that answer now, we have a very fresh start um, presentation. And uh, it, I'm not sure how far we are. I mean, yes. if we don't control this at the end of the day, we will be here until very late. Yeah, we, we, we do still have two more candidates who've been yeah. waiting out there, yes. like you, uh, Judge yes. Bodhkrita. So let, yeah. let's just try to keep the answers yeah. as no. concise no, as no, possible. I, I appreciate that. I thought I'll just give the context. But, but yes, you're right, uh, Judge Campbell. So, sorry, I'll, I'll try and get to the point. Um, when you applied in, in the Eastern Cape, uh, you came before the Commission on the 6th of April 2022, and the, uh, the proceedings are in, in the pack. I think you've seen them. Yes, yes. Um, and you used a rather quaint phrase when um, the Chief Justice then was, um, Judge, uh, Chief Justice Zonda was welcoming you and introducing you, and um, he said, we. He said to you, I understand that in the past certain people had made attempts to persuade yourself, to persuade you to make yourself available, but did not, did, not, did not succeed. It looks like somebody has succeeded this time, and you replied to him by saying the following. JP, is a, JP is, very, is a very persuasive man, CJ. He told me the first time when I went down there that the understanding is that cattle always graze towards their, towards their home state. <laughs> Uh, and, and I understood that to mean that you had decided to go back to your roots in, 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 in the Eastern Cape. Well, well, uh, well partly. But that was part of the consideration, yes. So, so, so why are you back here in the Western Cape? Well, well... Oh, sorry, why do you want to be back here in the Western Cape? Yes. Uh, but he's, he's a South African. He's free to go anywhere. He wants to uh, judge Gamble. I'm from the Eastern Cape, but here I am working in Johannesburg. I, I, I would, I would, I would genuinely like to, to try and contribute to, uh, to, uh, to things up there, uh, uh, Judge uh, Campbell. That, that division has been good to me. Is your family still for, here? For many years. Well, well, we're straddling. My wife, my wife prefers to be in Cape Town. I am in, uh, I'm in, in Kobecha. Thank you, Mr. Poso. I have no questions, Chief Justice. No questions, Commissioners? Like Commissioner Nokonyan? Uh, Chief Justice, uh, um, good uh, evening, uh, uh, Judge Potrete. Evening, Commissioner. Uh, thanks. I'm one of the junior counsel that appeared before you in Umtata. I think uh, I can vouch that you're one of the best judges. But on this one, uh, you said to be a senior of senior judges in the Western Cape Division. That's what you said. And um, I did ask uh, some, some of the contestants before, but then I think I must also ask you the same. Um, I take it that you are aware of the challenges being experienced by that division. And if recommended then, how can you um, uh, uh, be expected to be uh, accepted by those 
senior judges we have talked about um, uh, as, as they are head. How are you going to be able uh, to manage those dynamics in that division? That's yes. the only question I have. Yes. No, thank you. No, no, as I've, uh, Commissioner, as I've indicated, um, all of those uh, senior judges, uh, including Judge Gamble, as he has, has indicated, we've been colleagues at the bar way back already. So I, I know all of them. I have a good relationship with all of them. I've got no issues with any of them. I'm sure, and take, uh, taking the encouragement that I've gotten and, uh, to, to make myself available, that I, I wouldn't have any difficulty to, uh, to rely on their support uh, in, uh, in, in addressing the issues of the, of the division. Thank you, Chief, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, it's been a long day, so we'll, we'll let you go at this stage, uh, Judge Potfrieder. Thank you, You're Chief, excused. Chief Justice. I'm indebted to you and the commissioners. Thank you.